What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list, and we want to shout out everyone for giving much love to our chicken wing tier list. You guys made Barack's day with that one, and since we've been seeing people beg for a music tier list, I figured I would be a man of the people and piss everyone off when I rate their favorite genre of music low. We were originally going to do a PlayStation exclusives tier list, but that can be held off for another list. Yeah, yeah, Joe, that's a pretty long intro. Can we get into what the people really want? Donald, do not rush me. Making a tier list is like taking care of a newborn child. If we cause it any disturbance, then it'll grow up to hate you and end up doing coke while recording it on camera. Uh, you speaking from personal experience, Joey? I don't want to talk about that right now. Let's instead dive first into this tier list. And up first, we got alternative metal pop and lastly rock. And here's the thing with these alternative genres. They are pretty experimental and have a unique sound that can sometimes lead to some pretty good bangers. What I've noticed personally is that it's a lot of hit or miss with these three and you really have to rummage through a lot of garbage in order to find the good stuff. To be fair to the garbage though, it isn't entirely their fault as most of the time it is underground bands or artists that just haven't hit their stride yet or are just starting off their music career so you can't hate it too much. I'd give alternative metal and pop a B tier but I will actually be giving an A tier for alternative rock because I find that it bangs more often than not. Wow, I cannot lie. I, an actual nuanced take was not something I was expecting from you, Joey. Well, prepare for the unexpected Barack. I'm more than just a handsome man who happens to be president. You're only the president part, Joe, because you and handsome never go together. Yeah, well, you and handsome also don't go together. Boom, roasted. But enough of that. Let's get on to our next set of music genres, and that'll be blues, Christian, and country. I personally have blues music in B tier because even though I don't enjoy it that much, I can recognize that it heavily impacted a lot of genres that a ton of people love and cherish. So I'll give it legacy points, but ultimately this belongs in B tier for me. Then if we talk about classical music, well, I am not a fan of this as well. Like, don't get me wrong, it can be a little nice, especially for thinking music or like, Apparently this music makes you smarter, but I don't know. Me personally, if I'm in the car, I will not be asking my friends, hey, yo, Donald, can you put on my favorite song? It's called Toccata and Fugue in D minor by J.S. Bach. Like you all have me fucked up if you think I will say that around the ladies. Still though, I'll give it a solid C tier because that's the stuff they'd play back in like the medieval era. But we move on to our real stinker, which is Christian music. I am sorry to any Christians out there but I have not found any good Christian music in existence. I will have to place this into F tier. Go figure the second Catholic president, we have rates good old fashioned Christian music so low. I can't even lie, Donald. Have you ever heard Christian rap? Okay, well that doesn't count because it is awful. Oh, but it does. And whenever I listen to that, it just stinks up my room. Anyways, up next we got country and I love me some country, but there is a slight caveat. I only listen to country in the summer. Like when I think of country, I think of some nice ass weather, windows rolled down in my car, or just sitting outside relaxing with a nice cold one. I don't really listen to country that much outside of summertime, but I still give it an A tier for being clutched during that time. But I'd understand people placing it in S tier. Common Joey L, because this definitely belongs in S tier. Like just because you listen to that shit in the summer doesn't mean that we all just abide by your rules. I am a big country fan, and we'll have that on at all times of the year. Yeah, and I just said I'd respect that, bro. This is my list, though, and I have it going there. I even have it grouped up with our next entry, which is EDM music, because I also have that going into A tier. Like, have you guys ever seen the girls at the raves? Boy, howdy, let me tell you that. It almost got an S tier from me, but I think A is a nice place for it. How are you going to rate a whole music genre just based on what girls look like Joe? Like how I just did? I don't know what you mean by that. I kind of did it pretty easily, but anyways, up next, we got emo music and folk music, and to tell you all the truth, I don't really like either, but I'll respect them enough to merit a C tier, because I feel like putting it in D tier would be a bit too mean. I understand that a lot of people enjoy listening to this, but for me personally, it is just a no. Okay, but in all seriousness, who listens to emo music anyways, and what the hell is folk music? Come on, Donald, put a bit of respect on my chemical romance, and as for the folk music, well, it's kind of like soft-spoken songs that come in the form of stories, I uh, think. Don't quote me on that. No way your ass said to respect my chemical romance. The Joe Dog said what he said, but anyways, let's move on. And our next two are funk and hardcore punk. And I got funk going into B tier because I respect the hell out of the, the Isley Brothers and Marvin Gaye. This is a solid as hell genre of music and still holds up. 
But as for the hardcore punk, yeah, the Joe Dog is most definitely not rocking with that. I have it going into D tier because I think anything with hardcore in the title is a bit too much. Like you're doing too much and you should diversify instead of going all in. Joe, that is literally the whole point of it. They, they don't want to diversify, but instead solidify their foundation of punk music and go even harder. Well, it sounds like shit, so maybe they shouldn't. Up next, we have an S tier. And to all my indie music haters, I want you all to suck on some Joe balls because indie is quite literally one of the best genres. The reason for this is because indie isn't just one thing. It can literally be any sound at all. You got indie rock, indie pop, indie alt, and the list goes on. But the point is that this is just music produced without any outside influence. This can be a guy who is making some bangers out of his mom's basement or just someone who separated from their label because it was infecting their sound too much. And I respect the hell out of people who do their own thing. It's a free spirit sort of thing. And when people experiment with their sounds or aren't influenced by mainstream stuff, you can get some dangerous bangers on your hands. You say you like free spirits. Is that why you're so lenient with Hunter all the time? Is he a free spirit to you? Well, he's free, just uh, not free from the coke, but uh, I'm sure one day he will be, but enough of my son who hates me. Let's talk about instrumental music only, and I have to keep it real with everyone. This is a D tier. I enjoy it a lot, but I feel like on its own, I won't be listening to instrumentals unless I really mess with the artist, but even then, I'd rather hear the original song with lyrics or what have you. Following that, we got another freaking S tier, and that is jazz. Who doesn't like jazz? It's honestly more relaxing than classical music, and it just makes me feel good, like I can maybe relax on my couch with a bit of whiskey. Or it can make me feel like I'm some detective in the 50s and I am trying to crack a case for a murder. I love jazz. Wow, that's high for jazz, but I love playing some Frank Sinatra during Christmas or dusting off an old Louis Armstrong record every now and then. I am more of a Miles Davis type of guy, but I respect that. Following that, we got two foreign entries here, and that is Korean pop and Latin music. And I feel like for both, I will put them into a B tier. I like them both a lot and I can jive with them, but what the fuck are they saying? I can't speak for the Koreans, but I know that the Latin music gets muy very loco and they just talk about girls and doing the deed. Oh shit. I may have to raise that one up higher, not gonna lie. But I have to talk about this next one. I know a lot of people are metalheads, but I regret to inform you that I am placing metal into uh, S tier. Had you there for a bit, didn't I? I was about to split a wig, man, I can't even lie. I would have hounded you and forced you to change this rating. Well, I know you're used to not having people consent, but fortunately for me, I do indeed like metal music. I just wanted to pull a fast one on the audience a bit. Uh, up next, we got opera. And this is kind of mid, but saying you went to see an opera is kind of a flex. Like you tell people, I just attended the opera the other day. They're gonna look at you like, God damn, this guy is fancy. But in reality, they don't know. I spent the whole day prior just watching TV and eating hot dogs in my stained wife beater and boxers. What type of stains? Lots of mustard and some ketchup. If you're in a pinch, you can suck on that part of the shirt and get a little flavor bomb in your mouth. That is so asinine. Yeah, we all know my ass is a nine, but flattery will get you nowhere, Barry. Up next, we got a triple threat because these next three all happen to be S tiers. I mess with pop music heavily, and if you're a hater on pop, then I can tell you get no play. Joe, out of everyone here, you get the least amount of girls. Yeah, because uh, you don't see them. Anyways, pop is a banger because it's just so catchy and I will always bop to Call Me Maybe or some poker face. And the other two belong in S tier because post genres and prog genres encompass a lot of things. Like you'd have to Google both, but just know that they have too many things in them to be left out. Like it's just a catalog of genres and it quite frankly isn't fair that they're on this list. Moving on from those two, though we got punk music, and I am not huge into the punk scene, but I'd give it a solid B tier. Cannot wait to hear what Barack would rate rap at probably an S tier in his book. Uh, it actually is deserving of an S, and you know I am into more music than just that, if you actually paid attention to my end of the year best music playlists I make. Yeah, he actually does make those things, but this is my list, and I say, uh, yeah, uh, rap belongs in S tier. Every time I hear Sexy Red talk about Hellcats and her coochie, I'm always amazed by the marvelous lyrical choices in her music, to quote her, my coochie pink, my booty hole brown. And I uh, unfortunately can inform you that one of those things is not true. Gross Joe. Yeah, but someone had to find out and I might as well let it be me. Next up, we got reggae and rock. And for reggae, I am feeling a solid A tier. I really like listening to that. And Hunter tells me they play that in a lot of clubs in Miami. 
I wish I'd know, but he never invites me. Oh, it's amazing. I went there with him recently. Oh, man. I wish I could have gone. But anyways, after that, we got rock, and this is a freaking staple. And no one can argue with me, because this is an automatic S tier. For theater and musicals, you guys can most definitely argue with me, because I am placing this into D tier. I freaking hate musicals whenever they're in my shows, so I doubt I'd like them as a genre. That's a bit hateful. Like, how is opera higher than theater? Are you a theater kid or something that goes there? Because I said so, I am not trying to fucking watch Footloose. Let's hurry and wrap this up and finish off the list. We got trap music and r and B. I'll give trap music a solid B because it can be good at times, but I am somewhat indifferent. But with r and B, oh man, I will twerk for this genre. Give me some smooth talking R. Kelly music and I will forgive him for peeing on those little girls. Now hold on, let him cook here. Free R. Kelly. Do not free him, he does not speak for us. What is up, gang? We're back with another ranking video. And this time around, we are going to be ranking the Games of the Year contenders. I know that it was already revealed what the Game of the Year was, but this is our personal presidential version of that. So hopefully you guys all enjoy this video. I don't get how we're making a Game of the Year tier list, yet I see no games with any baddies in sight. Like what happened to the good old days where we had female-led protagonists, and they made me quiver and salivate just at the thought of being near them. I don't care much about the female protagonist, but we definitely need more baddies. Like the only ones on this list that have any baddies is Baldur's Gate 3. Catch me romancing Shadowheart seven days a week, every week of the month. Oh man, I totally forgot about that. I definitely spent a long bit of time just uh, analyzing the great dialogue options and cutscenes this game has to offer. Uh, only with the female characters though. Okay, that's enough. I don't need this to be the main topic of the video when we're literally just starting it. I think what I'll base the grading system on is purely off personal preference because quite honestly, all of these games were made with love and care. Like all of these are sound and solid, but I definitely had more fun and spent more time playing certain games rather than others. Let's get this ranking started and talk about The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. How are we feeling about it, fellas? Zelda is a baddie and I can glue together some rocks and make some contraption with it. For me personally, it was probably the second best game I played this year. I spent hours playing this thing and remembered that we even reviewed this thing, guys. Yeah, I remember that, but quite honestly, I don't think I played beyond what we did for the review. Like, I think I have 45 hours on the game and just eventually forgot about it. Don't get me wrong, I still really like the game and consider it one of the best on this list but I can't give that high of a ranking to a game I didn't finish and then proceeded to get somewhat bored of it sometime after. Like I played it religiously and then boom, I hit a massive wall and to this day, I have yet to pick up the game again. I'd still give it like a third place on this list. Looks like I'm the tiebreaker here. And Joe, I love the fact that I am breaking this bad news to you, but I actually don't think it belongs in second place either. I have like 100 hours in the game, but I did the duplication glitch and I duped a bunch of diamonds and then sold them and bought armor and I don't know. I just felt kind of dirty after that and lost my will to play the game further. It remains untouched like with Barry here and I know it was my fault for sullying the honor of the game by duplicating the items and I know it isn't the game's fault at all and I should actually be blamed for it, but here's my rebuttal. I uh, don't care, it goes in third place. No! Damn. That's tough, Joe. I am sorry we had to do that to you. It's okay, because we have one of your other favorite releases this year. Do you see it? It's Super Mario Wonder, and you love that game. Heck yes. I love me some good Super Mario 2D platforming games, and this one is so full of energy and character. Not to mention, it's just like a good return to form for Mario. Where are we placing this, fellas? I won't mind number one, because it produced my favorite Rule 34 fan art of Princess Peach in her elephant mode but I also wouldn't mind second place either. Oh man, I cannot wait to break it to him. Break what to me? Yeah, Joe, uh, me and Donald haven't played much of it because he just got the game like two days ago. And I feel like we can't place it that high because of that reason. I just prefer 3D platforming Mario games to be quite frank. Okay, so is this going into fourth place instead? That hurts, I can handle it. I'm thinking we place this into fifth place. Like that's not a bad ranking either, Joe. Remember these games are all freaking amazing. And compared to the other games above it, I just feel like it could not compete, in my opinion. It definitely is the best platformer on this list, though. Jesus Christ, the Joe heads are eventually going to have to rise up against you guys if you keep dishonoring me like this. Donald, please tell me you think otherwise. I don't know why you think I would be on your side, but me personally, I think it should be lower, but I'll take fifth place. 
Okay, so fifth place it is. Sorry, Joe, but it is not better than what I have going above it. And speaking of that, we got what I think is fourth place. And that is Alan Wake 2. Many of you might be asking yourselves, what the hell is Alan Wake 2? And if you have not played it, then you are missing out, especially if you love yourself some horror games. I know Joe here would have agreed if he wasn't so scared of playing horror games. I'm not scared of horror games. If anything, they're scared of me. They are not underage girls, so there is no way they'd be terrified of you, Joe. But as for your ranking, Barack, I think I'd have to agree because I did enjoy Tears of the Kingdom more. And if you're placing what I think you're going to place above it, then I also have to agree with this placement. As a fan of horror games, I think we needed more stuff like this because we need more greatness in that genre. Glad you agreed, Donald. And even though our next entry technically qualifies for that genre, I just feel like it wasn't that scary, to be honest. Like, I love the Resident Evil 7 vibes more, and I have this game going into sixth place. Okay, I loved Resident Evil 4, and I am sure people watching do as well, so you'll have to explain yourself. Okay, okay, hear me out. I don't think a remake should be a contender for Game of the Year. I think there should be a whole new category for it, like Remake of the Year, because it simply isn't fair to put it up against these new games with fresh and new ideas. I think this game would have won Remake of the Year, and with the amount of games getting remastered and remade, I definitely think we should add that as a category moving forward. I still really love the game, don't get me wrong, people. I am not a hater, but rather I think this should get its own flowers and not be lumped in with others in a category that I think it very clearly was not going to win. Okay, after explaining yourself, I actually somewhat agree with that. There should be a separate category for it, but if the remake is just that amazing, I think it should still be in contention for Game of the Year. But either way, I can see where you're coming from. Thanks, Donald. But up next, we got our final two contenders for our personal Game of the Year rankings, and that is Spider-Man and Baldur's Gate 3. Having played both, I can tell you all that I am making a very informed decision on this, and I know a ton of Spider-Man fans were freaking out when they saw the Game Awards live and Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year over Spider-Man 2. And here in this tier list, I am announcing the same exact result. I think Spider-Man 2 belongs in second and debatably third place, if I am being quite honest. The main reason I am placing it above Tears of the Kingdom is because I actually finished Spider-Man 2 and was able to not get overwhelmed by the whole experience and enjoyed it for what it was. It's like a roller coaster, you hop on board and you have a ton of fun during it, but it's a somewhat short experience, but whilst you're playing it, you don't really realize that it was a short time. You get so engulfed by the story, and honestly, it's a lot like a Marvel movie. Back when they were good though, but that's a whole other discussion. But yeah, it's like an interactive movie experience, and I personally love Spider-Man a lot, and he is my favorite superhero, and I have to give him his flowers for this performance. That's some hardcore glazing over a superhero game, but yeah, to be honest, you could have swapped the placement with Tears of the Kingdom and Spider-Man, but either way, it doesn't matter, because the real Game of the Year winner is the one you left for last, and I am sure Joey has no objection to this one. Yeah, uh, I actually don't, and you all know this. We played this game for hours upon hours, and it was basically me, Donald, and Barack playing with our custom characters while we all competed for Shadow Hearts Love. My four foot ten halfling definitely did bag the baddie, and we uh, had some very good cutscenes playing. Let me tell you, I had to mute my microphone at times because my little Joe head wanted to take a gander at the screen. Jesus, that is so gross and vile. You could have talked about so many things like the combat mechanics being interesting and engaging. You could have talked about the various dialogue options and how you can interact with the world and characters around you to manipulate any outcome you want. Or you could have just mentioned the superb voice acting and character design. Nah, I don't think I will. Figured Joe would do that, but yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 is amazing. Everyone go check it out. Any final words, Barack? Uh, not really. This video was just made to glaze Baldur's Gate 3 some more. I'll glaze Shadow Heart with my special creme fraiche some more if we keep talking about it any longer. I have the game pulled up right now and just took off all of her armor and clothes. That's it. Cut the video before we hear this old man moan. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we are going to hit everyone with a months of the year tier list. And we figured we'd do this considering it's almost the end of the year by the time this is recording and we've been through every month of the year, so now is the best time to do this grading. What if I love every month of the year? What if I am so thankful to be alive that I just appreciate every waking moment and learned that every single day of every single month has its ups and downs? 
But we need that to truly appreciate the beauty behind everything. Sure, we might love Christmas, but we needed the autumn months to get to our beloved winter season. Joe. Yeah? Shut the hell up. Thanks, Donald and Joe. We do not care about what you have to say, Joe, because we are making a goddamn tier list, and that is final. Now, let's get this baby started. And if you all haven't noticed, we actually put these months in order. So uh, just wanted to point out that nice little touch. But anyways, as I was saying, January, man, what don't I have to say about this month? It's a fantastic time to introduce the new year and really is a time for change for a lot of people. Everyone has their New Year's resolutions and tons of people fail it within that month. I don't even know how that happens, but apparently it does. I remember I challenged Joe to have a New Year's resolution to stop being so creepy, and that dude failed it literally a week later. Listen, man, I asked you to define creepy. You didn't give me an exact definition, so I had to freestyle that. And I would say that I am still holding that resolution up proudly to this day. Joe, you made my neighbor move within a week of meeting her for the first time because you kept stalking her house at night and calling their phones and doing nothing but breathing into the microphone. That's not even mentioning the stuff you did to her kids at the park. Listen, man, they were simply asking for it. Jesus Christ, please let's not do this and let's instead focus on the ranking. What are we thinking here, fellas? Because I am leaning towards an A tier because I love the new year. Yeah, I'd say an A tier fits right because it is a cool way to start everything off. Uh, I'd take it or leave it. What the hell does that even mean, Joe? You can't just take it or leave it. It's a goddamn month out of the year and we have to rank it. You know what? I am just putting it in A tier. Anyways, moving past that, we got February and I won't lie. I don't really vibe with this month. I got to do so many things for Michelle and it's a short month. So I don't even think anything eventful happens here. Yeah, screw Valentine's Day. Milani already has her birthday, Mother's Day, and Christmas. Now you're telling me there's a whole other day that I have to worry about just to get her shit. Ha, ah, you guys are such nincompoops. You guys don't understand the beauty and romance in simple days like this. I love dispersing my love to the world and treasure Valentine's Day. Joe, the little girls you send chocolates to are not your Valentines. Quit it with that shit. Your sister sure appreciated the Joe dog's meat. What was that? I said that I can go with or without February. That is most definitely not what he said. And once again, you cannot go with or without a month. We literally need to pass them, but I think Joe gave us the green light to place this in D tier. But yeah, after that we got March, and I don't really know what to say about this month. It's kind of a transitional one. And nothing really happens in the month of March. Come on, Barry, you love March because of March Madness. The whole world knows you love basketball. I mean, you were basically made to play that sport. What do you mean by that? You're six foot two, my man. Of course you can play some ball. Nothing more than that. Uh-huh, any comment to add about March, Joe? I love to pinch people who aren't wearing green. And I mean that I really, really love to pinch people who aren't wearing green during St. Patrick's Day. Odd, but you are Irish. I forget that at times. Yeah, this is going into C tier, quite honestly. Then following that week performance, I think we got another week entry, and that is April. Who the hell even cares about April? Uh, what the heck do you mean, who cares about April? It is only like the best day ever, and that's April Fools. I freaking love that month, and I especially love that day. God, he's so freaking retarded. Let's not say that word. We do not want to get demonetized, but yeah, you're right, Donald. Joe, you're a little, hmm, how can I say this in a way where we won't get demonetized? Joe, at times, you strike me as a person who is missing, or maybe has an additional chromosome. My syndrome might be down, but you all already know Joe Dog got his paper up. Jesus Christ, but yeah, I am placing this into C tier. I don't really care about what Joe has to say, and after that, we got May. And again, I hate to break it to any May lovers, but we've hit like boring months. I don't know what even goes on during the month of May. How freaking ignorant can you get Barack? The utter gal to believe nothing goes on in May when in all actuality it may be the most important month of the year because it is Arthritis Awareness Month during May. You cannot be serious right now, Joe. I am super serial. Yeah, just for that little comment, I am putting this shit in C tier and will not care at all about Arthritis Awareness Month. But anyways, after that, we are gearing up towards better months and we got June and this is a pretty good month. Ah, because of Juneteenth, right? I am right there with you, brother. I need all my brothers from other mothers to stand up and rise for Juneteenth. Uh, no, I just meant that it was a good month because it gears us up towards summer. It has very little to do with Juneteenth, quite honestly. I personally like it because of Pride Month. 
I sure do love those parades because I see so many girls that wear no shirts and get this. They also wear no bras. Now the Joe dog can definitely get down with that and I am a huge supporter of the gays. Totally thought that was going in a different direction, but it somehow retained the same creepy tone I thought it was gonna originally have. I hate to say it though, but Joe is spitting. Well, I, I would not say that is necessarily spitting, but whatever. I totally did think it was also going somewhere else. But anyways, I think I am rating June as a solid B tier. After that, we got July, and I don't think this one really needs any sort of debate, right? Like a solid S tier, because it is the peak of summer and the best time to chill outside, because you get the amazing sun, and you can go out to the beach more often. Maybe get a sick tan or something. Well, we wouldn't want you to get a tan, Barack. You get any darker, and I will have an even harder time finding you at night. I hate you so goddamn much. Ooh, what about me? Can I still get a tan, Donald? Joe, please tan as much as you can without wearing any sunscreen. You will be doing the world a favor with what will happen to you after. Don't see how me getting a dope-ass tan makes the world better, but if you think I should do it, then who am I to deprive the world of some tanned Joe dog goodness? I know the Joe heads will go crazy for me in a Speedo. I did not want that mental image in my head, but unfortunately it is now ingrained deep inside my brain. Anyways, after summer, we got August, and this is a transition period, but it still kind of is a continuation of summer and is still hot as hell for the early month and sometimes even the middle of the month. Like, I remember still going to the beach when it was August earlier this year, and it was hot as hell. Well, given all the global warming and climate change that is happening out in the world, and the polar ice caps melting at an alarming rate to the point where we cannot even harvest snow crabs because they have died in droves due to all that happening. I am not one bit surprised that you feel that way. It yeah, but it's dope as hell that it's hot in August, Joe. Quit being a loser. Yeah, Joe. If anything that sounds like something you should fix and not me and Donald, but yeah, I'm also rating this an S tier. A bit too high for my liking, but whatever, I'll take it. Perfect. Now. Let's move on to September. And I think this is where a little drop off happens and I don't really enjoy September all that much. It really starts to get cold and sometimes it'll be warm and it won't just know how to behave. I am thinking a solid B tier for it, but then we get saved because we got October up next and who doesn't like a spooky month? You got a bunch of horror stuff going on and quite honestly, as a big fan of horror, this whole month is great. Then we got Halloween, which is a great excuse for older people to dress up and go crazy with parties and I feel like we all need that stress reliever. I know I need the stress relief when I see those nurse outfits. Joe, please relax right now. We do not need those comments right now. The one caveat I'll give to October is that handing out Halloween candy is annoying as hell. We need to abolish that, but otherwise I am giving October an A tier. Might honestly have to start putting razor blades in the candy that I'm giving away to all those little shits. Okay. Did not need to go that far, but anyways, after we got November, and whilst I think this month mainly gets carried because it's the segue into December and Christmas, I still think it gets some respect because of Thanksgiving and the fact you can do Christmas shopping during the Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. So it's a good prep month and it has its own good things as well. I'm feeling yet another A tier for this. Heck yes. I love Thanksgiving and I think this is my favorite ranking of the list. Not too low, but also not too high. Ah, uh, thanks, Joe. I'm not used to hearing that enthusiasm from you about something so normal. Well, wrapping up this whole list, we got December, and I think we all already know that this is going into S tier. Like, there is no way around it because we all love Christmas. And it has the countdown for the new year. And that's pretty cool. The only negative I can say about it is that with each passing December, it reminds you that you're constantly aging and leaving behind your precious youth. I'm not that bad yet, but Physical ailments and pains hit you more often, harder, and stay with you longer. Before, if I got hurt or got sick, it was just a matter of waiting a few days to heal. Nowadays, even with medical assistance. It's weeks and weeks of aches and pain before something heals. Cuts and scrapes are okay, but muscles, joints, and nerves take forever. It's hard to explain, but you slowly lose the illusion of invulnerability you had in your younger years then parts of you start hurting for no discernible reason. Doctors, stop trying to treat or diagnose you and just say, well, you're getting to that age. Losing touch with friends as they get girlfriends or get married, it gets harder and harder to just hang out. Another thing is that some people have the realization that every day your potential is shrinking. 
The more you live, the more you're locked into that life. One day you look at yourself and say, well, this is it. This is all I'll achieve and be in this life. You can either come to terms with it in a healthy way or let it depress you. But it's a very different feeling from the sheer potential you feel when young. Sure, when you were young, you knew on some level that your wildest dreams are a long shot, but they could happen. That hope dies bit by bit as you age. Yeah, cool story, bro, but at least high school girls stay the same age. Am I right or am I right, fellas? Disclaimer. The following video does not glorify the use of substances, but instead attempts to be non-biased when delivering information disguised as entertainment through the form of satirical humor. All information contained on this video is for entertainment and informative use only and does not claim to be an authority. You should not construe the publication of this content as an endorsement by frail of the views expressed herein or any warranty or guarantee of any strategy, recommendation, treatment, action, or application of medication or preparation made by the author of the content. Viewer discretion is advised. What is up, gang? Your presidential trio is back, and this time around we are doing a, a well, a substances tier list. Just to frame that in a nice way, but we are ranking these based on what I have heard from others because uh, the Joe Dog may or may not have had all of these. Plus, remember that these things are bad for everyone, and we here do not condone it, but we did it because the comments have been begging for this to be made for like over two months. Oh, but you'll let Hunter do anything he wants whenever he wants. Yeah, he's such a little rascal, but let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got some Benadryl. Now, I know what you're all thinking, Joe, this is not what we wanted. We want you to talk about LSD or something cool. Well, guess what? This is also a substance, and I will review it before we get to our heavy hitters. Now, I am a fan of Benadryl, which I am giving an S tier. This stuff is great for treating allergies. So if you're ever like camping out at someone's house and staying in the bushes, waiting to jot down their everyday schedule, but happen to be laying in some poison ivy. Well, don't you worry because you will be covered with this stuff and you will not blow your cover when you're constantly itching yourself because the Benadryl will help treat that. I really don't like where that is headed. Can we talk about cough syrup, which is up next? I doubt even you can turn something as useful as that into something horrible. I don't know what you mean by that, but up next, we got some Delsum cough syrup, and we might as well grade the Robo Tablets cough medicine, which of course comes in tablet form as well. I'm giving them both an A tier, but honestly, I might give the upper hand to the syrup because if that bad boy has any dextromethorphan, or as the streets say, DXM, or as their other street names, Black Beauties, Brownies, Dexies, Dextro, Drix, Gel, Groove, Mega Pearls, Poor Man's Ecstasy, Red Devils, Robo or Robo Tripping, Roho, Rome, Skittles or Skittling, Scissorp or Syrup Sky, Triple C, Tussin and Velvet. But uh, I don't know about any of that. Don't abuse over-the-counter medicine people. You're better off just drinking Everclear. Jesus Christ, Joe, don't tell them to do that either. I'm not telling them to do it. I am merely suggesting that it may be the healthier option if they were to choose between both. Only if they are of age, of course. We made a disclaimer, we're fine, Barack. Anyways, up next, we got Adderall, and old Joe can definitely tell you about this one since I was uh, prescribed this one, wink, wink. Joe, you don't audibly say wink, wink when doing stuff like that, Jesus Christ. Well, the Joe dog is not one to follow the rules, but yeah, this stuff is freaking amazing. This is a real life cheat code for those with ADHD and I swear I took some when I had to read up on King Henry VIII's wiki page, and I was beyond locked in. Like you could not distract me even if you tried. It was like I had a case of the tism and I saw a train pull into a station. I have to rate this thing an S tier. I don't like the way you're promoting these things. I am starting to think this tier list was a bad idea. Well, it's too late for that, isn't it, Barry? After that, we got another S tier, and that is a vape pen. As long as you're of age, then this is perfectly legal. And let me tell you that I want those metal monsters in my lungs from smoking. Like I have never been addicted to a vape, but I love getting that buzz from hitting it. Here's a little tip for all the people who think they'll get addicted. Just give them away or stop using them once you feel the urge of suddenly using it without any warning. Like if you're chilling on the couch and you think to yourself, man, I want to hit my vape. That's raps, buddy, because you done got addicted and you better stop. Joe, how are you not scared of getting addicted because I see you hit vapes and even use Zins? Oh yeah, I am a part of Zin Nation, but uh, if it were on this list, it would also be an S tier. But to answer your question, Donald, I always tell people that they shouldn't have a fear of me developing a nicotine addiction. 
they should fear my already very much so real masturbation addiction. I can't stop cranking it and people think I'm joking, but I am truly suffering. Joe, stop with the gross jokes and continue with the list. No one understands me. Oh, well, I'll just live with that for the rest of my life. Anyways, after that, we got some magic mushrooms and shrooms going into S tier. Hypothetically, if you were to use these, make sure you crush them up and put them in a cup and squeeze a lime or two into it and mix it all together and then ingest it. It'll make the effects hit harder and pass by quicker. But uh, I would not know that because I only do legal things like alcohol, which is up next. And I absolutely hate that whoever made this used a freaking Everclear bottle. But yeah, this still goes into S tier. Remember once again that we are not saying you should do any of these substances. We are merely ranking them in an entertaining manner for you all. Joe really worried about our ad revenue with this video. The Joe dog fears the YouTube algorithm. But yeah, up next we got another S tier and that is marijuana and this stuff is an S tier as well. And can be as fun as drinking if you are partaking in legal states, of course. I mean, just look at how happy Cheech and Chong are because of it. After that, we got DMT going into B tier. And this stuff will make you live a lifetime within 30 minutes. And I personally have not done it, but I love hearing from people who have. Like if you are curious to hear it more in detail, check out Psyched Substance on YouTube. And he has a whole channel dedicated around trying out different substances. And he does DMT on video. After that, we got what I assume to be is MDMA. At least I think it is. But yeah, this stuff is pretty cool at raves. And you can see everyone's pupils widen and they just talk about how great life is and have their brains stocked filled with dopamine. And I think I have to give it an A tier. You know, despite you not taking a lot of these, I am still surprised that you have been around people who have taken this type of stuff. How are you surprised? I would be more surprised if he wasn't. Hunter probably tried every damn thing on this list and even more, who knows with that guy. Well, I won't deny that, but yeah, I have seen some stuff after that we got, as Martin would say. Cocaína. No. Flour. Somebody just asked me um, why I hate the military. And this stuff is pretty all right, but if you get a poor man's version of it, then you will be absolutely out of your mind and it'll ruin you. Cocaine and crack are the same, but at the same, you're getting a more shit version of it with crack. This has to get a C tier for me and it ruins your nose. After that, we got some, uh, I actually cannot think of what that is for the life of me, so I will place it into D tier. Someone in the comments, educate the masses on what this is, because remember, this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Shit, after that, we got some pink powder, and I don't know what that is either. I'll still give it a C tier because I like the color pink, and after that, I assume that's meth, and from the various meth head videos I've seen across multiple platforms, including the ones that start with an X, I can tell you that this stuff only looks cool because of Walter White, but this belongs in D tier. Then after that, we got some grass looking thing. Listen, guys, I don't know what these are. I am not qualified for this list. And frankly, I don't know why I am the one making it, but this goes in C tier, I guess. I won't even lie, Joe. Me and Barack talked it over and chose you specifically so you wouldn't do a good list in the near future. But uh, we also kind of assumed that you would know what these things are just because we thought you and Hunter probably did them together. No, not because I didn't want to, but because he wouldn't share. But yeah, I just need the comments section to clutch up for us and just tell us what the hell the things are. But thankfully, we won't need the comments for this next one because old Joe here is quite familiar with LSD's game and I have to also give this yet another A tier. I may or may not have tripped, I can neither confirm nor deny, but oh man, oh man. The Joe dog hypothetically thinks that this is cool for a one-time thing, but preferably never guys remember that. And wrapping up this whole list, we got literally have Viagra or like some sort of performance enhancing thing for when you're getting down and dirty. And let me tell you right now that this belongs in D tier. The Joe dog never needs any help in that regard because I run on pure, raw, unfiltered Joe energy. What the hell is Joe energy? Oh, you'll know Joe energy when you sense it deep inside of you building up until it eventually releases in one big bust. And now I wish I didn't ask that. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. And to celebrate the wonderful holiday that is Christmas, we are going to be making a tier list based on different items that one would need for the holidays and that ranges from food all the way to movies. God, I'm freaking excited for this list. I don't know if you guys know this, but I really love Christmas. What? No way. It's not like you've made it super obvious on almost every single tier list that has ever mentioned this holiday. All right, Joe, you don't have to be mean about it, but anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. 
And up first, we got snowmen. I'll keep it real with everyone here and say that I don't care at all about snowmen. Honestly, I'd say the same. Like, I have not made a snowman in forever, and I could care less about it. Why is it always snowmen? Why can't it be snow women instead? I don't know, and I quite frankly don't care, Joe. But anyways, I think we are all in agreement that these things don't matter. I will be placing snowmen at the very bottom of our tier list because who quite honestly cares if you make them or not? The same cannot be said for our next entry because I feel like gingerbread cookies are more important. Like me personally, I can go with or without them, but I know some people really care about these things. I would be one of those people because I need me some gingerbread cookies with milk. Does not surprise me one bit, but uh, I have to agree with Barack here because I could really care less if it's there or not. Well, that's a 2V one here. Donald and I think I will be placing it in the middle tier because me and Joe are quite indifferent towards it. Once again, these Christmas cookies should also be placed in the same middle tier. Like, I enjoy these things, but I am not handstand twerking on the wall for some Christmas cookies or gingerbread cookies. I think it's because I value the food and presents more than the treats themselves. Like, the same could be said about candy cane, but we're not there yet. This next item, though, I uh, don't know what it is. It looks like a potted tree, but I'm just going to substitute that for artificial trees. And quite honestly, I like them and would prefer they be there rather than nothing. I feel like trees of any type are important for the whole vibe and ambiance of Christmas. But obviously, I would prefer a real tree over anything else. Getting a real tree is such a hassle, though. Like, then you got all the pine needles going all over the floor, and I have to sweep constantly. And to be honest, I think I prefer the artificial trees over the real things. That's just because you're lazy, Joe. I would rather have some fresh, nice-smelling pine than some piece of plastic. I agree. Sure, we are probably hurting the environment, but, I mean, A, who cares? After that, we got The Grinch, and this movie is not needed for Christmas. And to be honest, I feel like most movies are not needed. Like, we'll have some in the background, but The Grinch isn't one where I'll lock in and pay attention to. I think I can go with or without it, quite honestly. Mariah Carey is a different story, though, because I will have her, and Frank Sinatra just on repeat. That and a little random songs, like Last Christmas, playing over and over just to help augment the vibe. And speaking of that, I have to have a real Christmas tree for Christmas. The smell of the pine just adds a multiplier for the overall Christmas feel in the house, and I think it is a must-have for the house. Amen to that brother, because I cannot imagine a Christmas without a real tree. I can and have had that type of Christmas for a couple of years now. I am telling you guys that the smell of pine and the hassle of getting a real tree is not worth the end product because it'll all result in the same thing, and that is the same ornaments going on the goddamn tree. See, that's how you feel, Joe. But me and Donald have seen the light and understand the importance of having the real deal in the house versus some plastic junk. Moving past that, we got Christmas pajamas, and I can go with or without this. Like I sometimes have the jammies on with the family, but we also dress up somewhat nice for our Christmas dinner and aren't super casual with it all. Or we just have some nice casual Christmas clothes, like some sweaters. Don't tell me you're the family who wears ugly Christmas sweaters the whole time. Well, not all the time, but sometimes it is funny to have those on. But we'll get to that when we reach them on the list, because up next we got Christmas ornaments, and I think this will be the first one I can go without. Like, they are okay if they're there, but the decorating with the tree and presents is enough, but these little shitty snow globes or small ornaments are just not worth it. I'd rather have stockings or something more flashy than just these little things. Plus, they break super easily, and if someone breaks it during a gathering, they just end up feeling bad and get all awkward, even though you tell them that it is honestly all okay and that you did not care that much about the ornament. Dude, I apologized last year already. Why do you keep bringing up my mistakes? See, that's the proof right there of that. But anyways, following all that, we got some fruitcake, and I can't really remember the last time we even had fruitcake at Christmas. I want to say that it is not really needed, but still would be kind of cool if it were there. But in all actuality, it quite frankly is not needed. The same cannot be said about Elf, because I like to have this and one other movie on this list just playing in the background while we unwrap presents. I wish I could relate to that, but after Hunter stopped visiting for the holidays, I don't really have a point in wrapping presents, or even buying some at this point. You know that's your fault entirely, Joe. I told you that if you just wrap up a kilo in some wrapping paper, then that'll be enough for Hunter. He literally gets that from me every year he visits. Wait, he visits you? 
Well, it's not like I want him there every year. I am tired of my spare room being used as the coke slash meth room. That's why I'm giving you pointers on how to get your son back. I don't get it. Why not just tell him he can't come during the holidays? The dude is my plug, and he knows the best party places in Miami. I cannot give that all up just because the man wants to go on an anti-Joe rant during the holidays and occasionally give substances to my other kids. Jesus, man. Well, at least it is in the spirit of giving, which is all that matters during the holidays. Following Elf, we now have Christmas Day turkey, and I never have turkey aside from Thanksgiving. So this already is cooked, because I could care less about some damn turkey on Christmas. Like, I don't associate turkey with Christmas at all, but if it's ham, that's a different story. Anyways, after that, we got the Charlie Brown Christmas special, and if you all guessed that I was talking about this movie as a must-have, then you'd all be incorrect. I can go with or without this movie, quite honestly, and the same can be said about our next item, because I am not a diehard for gingerbread houses. Like, they can be fun sometimes, so I give them a bit of respect, but if they're not there or I don't make any, it's not like I'm gonna fall to my knees and be mad at the world because I ruined Christmas. Gingerbread houses are just like edible Legos if you guys don't think about it. What the hell does that even mean? Is it because you construct both and make things out of them? I don't understand you a lot of the time, but one thing I do understand is Christmas ham. I would like to have ham every time during Christmas alongside whatever food we made that year. I don't really place a lot of stock into Christmas food because I feel like it's good to switch it up every year. But having ham is indeed a staple. Following that, we got eggnog, and this is a must-have. And I know there are a lot of eggnog haters out in the world, and I just want you to know that I do not care. I only buy this during the Christmas season, so please let me enjoy my goddamn drink one month out of the 12 in the year. Then we have Christmas sweaters and or ugly sweaters. Either way, I would like to have these when celebrating if we are not going to dress up. I like to be in a festive mood with the clothing if we're not going to dress nicely. Well, maybe with normal Christmas sweaters, but I'm not a fan of the whole wear the ugliest Christmas sweater type of stuff. They're all dumb, and a lot of the time they're just overpaid trash someone got online because they want to be funny. Well, that's kind of the point of that, Donald. But anyways, moving on, we got hot chocolate. And real listeners know that we all love hot chocolate, so it is an immediate must-have with no questions asked. Candy canes, I can go with or without, though. Like, I've used them for decoration, but to actually eat and stuff, well, they are not the best. Same with Polar Express, because I don't really care if it's playing or not, but that leaves two movies left. I wonder which one is going into the must-have category. You've got me all sorts of fucked up. If you think anyone in the audience will believe that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer has any chance of being a must-play movie during Christmas. Just get going with the list and put Home Alone up there because we all know that's the movie. Damn, Joe. I did not know you hated Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer so much. But first, let me rate sledding. And it is most definitely not really needed. It's more like a winter event, and even then, why go sledding when you can snowboard? But now that we're on Home Alone, I regret to inform the audience that Joe was indeed correct because this is a must have during the holidays. It doesn't even feel good saying out loud anymore because you ruined it, Joe. You just sucked out all of my Christmas joy. So let's just get this list over with. And after that, we got presents. And of course, that's a must have. You cannot have Christmas without any sort of presents because they're just a part of the holiday. Like it is so integral towards it. And who doesn't like the joy of giving a really good present away to someone? As for the movie, well, I do not really care and could go with or without Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Then wrapping up this beautiful list, we got Christmas carolers, and quite honestly, they are not really needed. Like, I don't mind them, but it can get a bit annoying having strangers sing to you at your door. That's why I have a sign in the front of my house that says, carolers will be shot on sight and have a laser pointer going out my front door. See me personally, I love to hear the little kids serenading their beautiful saint-like voices to me. All right, that's enough of you, Joe. And to our whole audience, we all wish you a happy holiday. Merry Christmas to you all. And may you all have a very nice and jolly Merry Jomas. A what? What is up, gang? We are back with another video, and go figures, Donald and Barack give me the freaking bug tier list. They're just lucky that I get caught watching those super long video documentaries where they do like the daily lives of insects, and you follow around one of those dudes for like a 40-minute series. I won't lie, though, because those videos bang, and not to mention I'm a huge fan of those terrarium videos on YouTube. I can watch a dude assemble a terrarium and choose what insects and animals will inhabit that place. I watch those for a long bit too. I have them in queue constantly and use them as background noise, huh? 
I was originally going to complain about you guys giving me this list, but uh, I am starting to actually see why I was given this list. Yeah, I hate to break it to you, Joe, but me and Barack suspect you have a case of the tism. Much to nobody's surprise, though. That, and you have been playing a lot of grounded recently, Joe. You're basically a bug expert when compared to me or Donald. Well, I wouldn't say he's more of an expert than me, but I had to throw him a bone occasionally, and he got this video. Well, you know what? I will make this one of the best videos on insect rankings to ever exist that was made in the year 2023 during the month of December. Extremely specific parameters, but you know what? It may be an actual factual statement. I know. I have never lied in my whole life. If I did, may Hunter stop snorting coke lines off some random escort's belly. And we all know that ain't stopping anytime soon. So let's just instead get started with this tier list. And up first, we have a very simple bug, and that is the ant. What can I say about these guys? They are cool and can lift up to 10 times their own weight. That's pretty cool, but me personally, I don't think they are the best. I think that ants belong in B tier just because there are most certainly cooler insects on the list, and I want to have this from my personal perspective. Like most of the time I see ants, I am not in a good mood because they are in my house just eating and messing up my things. Well, maybe you should start closing your various food items and spraying insecticide around your home because that is a very solvable issue. The Joe Dog refuses to admit defeat in the face of insects. Following that, we got our first S tier in this list and much to nobody's surprise, it is the humble and mighty bumblebee. These little dudes are harmless and produce honey, which if you all don't know is very delicious and I have got to have honey on my pancakes or French toast. I am a syrup man as well, but man, oh man, all natural honey has a special place in my heart. And these little dudes do that and pollinate the plants. All around bees are just the best. That's a pretty good rating for these guys. This is actually a base take from you, Joe. I will not lie. All the Joe heads believe that my takes are based. That's just how the Joe dog rolls. But anyways, following the great bee, we have a beetle, but more specifically the black ox beetle. How do I know this, you ask? I am just a master at knowing what bugs are what. Shut the hell up, Joe. He literally only knows what it's called because he played grounded. But either way, watch that be wrong. Okay, you caught me, but I swear that's the right beetle. But let's get to the rating. And I firmly believe that these guys are pretty cool. You can make them fight, and they are just all around swell guys. I think I am giving them an A tier for no other reason other than them looking cool and fighting in a cool way. After that, though, we got another S tier, and that is the butterfly. Who doesn't like butterflies? Like you have to be on some big hater shit to be able to hate butterflies. I remember getting that little kit to grow your own butterflies and then releasing them once they were fully grown. Don't you mean you got caterpillars and then they turned into butterflies? You can't just get butterflies. You have to get caterpillars first and have them cocoon into a butterfly. Way to get on my ass for something as simple as that. Barack, but sure, yeah, I meant to say caterpillars, but either way, those are next on the list, and they frankly are not as cool as butterflies. I would rather just have their final form, but seeing them crawl and squirm is pretty cool, so I'd have to give them an A tier for their potential coolness. It's like that one episode of SpongeBob where they get a pet caterpillar, and they thought he was cool as hell. After that, we got our first D tier, though, and that is the goddamn cicada. I would firebomb an entire colony of these things because I swear to God they make so much noise when you're so close to sleeping and it takes a lot to bother me from my sleep. I remember Donald brought me to a nightclub and while they were playing hardcore EDM, my ass was simply napping in the corner. That's how you can tell cicadas are the real problem if they stop me from sleeping but EDM won't. Then that shows how annoying they are. Uh, Joe, I don't think you realized you were roofied at that nightclub. Uh, what? Yeah, you took a drink from this one guy who was eyeing you down, and even though I told you not to, you said, and I quote, the Joester never turns down a free drink, and next thing you know, you were knocked out cold in the corner of our table. I would have helped you, but I was too busy dancing, and I could not leave this hot chick I was with just because you were getting dragged away by that guy to the bathroom. Huh, well, that would explain why my butt was so sore, but whatever. I still hate cicadas, and that is the moral of the story. Are we sure that's really the moral of the story? Okay, new moral of the story, fuck cicadas and never take drinks from strangers. After that, we got another goddamn D tier, and those are cockroaches. I don't even need to explain this one at all. We all know how much everyone hates them and how gross they are. After that, we got dragonflies, and these dudes are dope, like they are really cool to look at, but you can't really interact with them and they just buzz around. I think I am feeling a solid B tier for them because they're not really all that. What the hell do dragonflies even do? Like, what is their purpose in the environment? 
I honestly don't know, but oh God, after that, we have the absolute worst bug in all of existence. If there were a tier below D, then I would put the fly there because these things just ruin everything. Like I hate when they just land on any food you have out and then you don't want to be gross and eat it because you already imagine the fly landed on some poop or something outside. So now if you take a bite out of your food, you're sitting there with the thought of yourself ingesting shit particles. And the absolute worst is when you're outside minding your own business and a fly keeps landing on you and harassing you like you're a 14 year old girl in front of R. Kelly. I hate that because then people will think I didn't shower. But uh, Joe, you don't shower a lot of the time. Yeah, but I don't want people to know that. Well, anyways, after that we got, uh, I think these are grasshoppers and I really have no opinion on these. I think they jump around a lot and are a solid C tier. Ooh, but the ladybug is an amazing bug. I have these dudes going into S tier, like who doesn't like these little guys just crawling and flying about? I know that I like to hold them sometimes and they just chill on my palm for a bit. After that, we got the praying mantis and these things can be kind of cool, especially with how they can kill so many things. But that also in turn scares me. Like I know that me personally, I am not scared of them. But what if someone who happens to be scared of them encounters a praying mantis because these things can kill birds, bro? I think this is a B tier still. Joe, how big do you think these things are? I don't know, but they look huge. Joe, you freaking idiot. They like not bigger than three to five inches, which is actually, uh, never mind, that is freaking big. I might even dare to say that they are huge, especially if the right set of hands are next to them. Actually, three to five is pretty small or barely cracking the average. I think you cured my fear of these little dudes. Following that, we got mosquitoes. And you all already know that these malaria-giving pieces of garbage are going to D-tier. And if anyone likes mosquitoes in the comments, I want you to know you're a dim-witted, lack-of-space singular cell organism with no bitches. Okay, you adding on that last part was not necessary at all. Make it make sense then, Barack. After that trash bug, we got something that isn't as bad, but I don't see any good in a moth. They are like evil butterflies, but not really. They're just like the ugly ass version of butterflies and they'll go in C tier for me. Following that though, we got a solid A tier in snails. I love these dudes and just messing with them. I'll grab one and move him like 10 feet back from where he came from and just do that over and over until I get bored. It brings me much joy to see them stuck in perpetuity. Bro got the snail on the same path as Sisyphus. Only until I get bored though, because I do have some compassion. After that, we got another C tier, and that is the spider. Now, don't get me wrong, I do mess with spiders and understand they help protect gardens from other bugs and that tarantulas are cool. I just am a little scared of them. Like whenever I get bit by a random spider, I suddenly think I am gonna die of super hyper mega death aids, and I would rather not die of that. Joe, do you realize how stupid that sounds? Most spiders aren't even deadly to humans. That's what they want you to think before they make their strike. But anyways, let's go with the next set of bugs and up next we got a stick bug and I have nothing to say then. Uh, they look cool and should go in B tier. Now the next one is a wasp and I have a deep hatred for wasps. They automatically go in D tier and are the worst of the worst. They are super territorial too and their stings hurt like hell. I love watching wasp extermination videos where they just go in there and either poison or destroy their homes and they can't do anything but watch. The wasp hate is valid, so I am not even gonna hold those comments over you. I personally enjoy the ones where random idiots try to take down a nest. Like, did you guys see that one video where the dude eats a wasp nest? No, I have not, uh, Frail, play the video for me and the audience. You want it, him, bitch? Is that who you really want it? You sure about that? There he is, bitch. There he is. There. Jesus, that was terrifying. But I oddly enough have respect for that guy. Well, rounding off the list, we got worms, and these dudes are cool. I give them an A tier. They remind me a lot of my uncircumcised All right, penis. that's a wrap. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we got a time of the day tier list. And with this list, I'll just be going over how a person generally feels during that time of day, because we all know how we'd feel if someone was like, 
you got to wake up at 5 a.m. versus a can you be up before 8 a.m.? Are you implying that waking up at 5 a.m. is a bad thing? Because the Joe dog never finds a bad time to wake up. I have the insane power to be able to fall asleep at a moment's notice. I didn't know we were calling dementia a power up, but I guess that's what we do now in the year of 2024. All right, no need to say mean things. We have a wonderful list right in front of us and our audience gets to enjoy another banger of a video. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got 12 a.m., and I don't know about you all, but 12 a.m. is kind of whatever for me. I'm feeling a B tier because like it's that indecisive time where you have to draw the line and be like, okay, am I going to stay up or finally go to sleep? And I don't like making that decision. Yeah, it figures that the decision to bomb multiple countries and incinerate multiple children in the Middle East is an easier decision for you. Thank deciding whether or not to sleep in. Okay, ouch, dude, but you know damn well what I meant. I think what Donald is saying is that you are being silly, Barry. That is in no way at all what I mean by that disparaging comment. Yeah, thanks for the useless comment as always, Joe. You're as helpful as a broken condom. Anytime, Bomberman. Ha! All right, that's enough. Let's move on to the next entry, and that is 1 a.m. Now, I am placing this into A tier because if you stay up till 1, then you probably are past the dreadful hour of 12 and have likely decided to stay up. Plus, if you're doing anything socially, then you know this is like the best hour to have fun, like other times are too early or barely getting there, but 1 is like the perfect time because it's not as late as 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., which with the way I talk about it, you guys can already tell that those two are lower than 1, and you'd be correct. I then have 2 a.m. going into B tier because it's approaching the lousy time of 3 a.m., and it's starting to get damn late. Then I have 3 a.m. going into C tier because most times out of 10, you are not having a good time at 3 a.m. except for the occasional party, but let's all be honest here. You're either doom scrolling Twitter just dreading to go to sleep because you either have stuff to do or you have to wake up early. I know that because the same things happen to me, I'll go down a YouTube rabbit hole and watch 50 minute video essays on movies I haven't watched or games I haven't played, all to avoid the fact that I have to wake up at 7 a.m. See me personally, I can never relate to that. The Joe dog adheres to a strict bedtime, and if I don't meet it, then I will be all out of whack and will not be as articulate as I know I should be. You're telling me that the current you is the articulate and smarter version? Jesus, I can't even imagine a more dumber version of you. I actually agree wholeheartedly with you on this. But, yeah, moving on from that, if you guys thought I hated 3 a.m., then welcome to 4 a.m., because I have this going even lower than 3, and I'm putting it into D tier. This is like the worst time, because if you're a night owl, then this is the time you realize that you have to go to sleep, or at least start getting ready for it. Because if you don't, you're going to mess up your sleeping schedule, because you know you won't fall asleep later if you don't do it now. Plus, like, nothing cool happens at 4 a.m., like normal people are dead tired by this time and will be red screen like in Call of Duty unless they get to their bed. I won't lie, if I am up at that time because of a social event, my ass is like one tap and on some low ass HP. Like I need a revive or something because 4 a.m. is quite a devious time to stay up till. Like I know my breakfast is gonna be missed unless I choose to tank the damage and just use an energy drink. 100% agreeing with you there, Donald. Then I got 5 a.m. going into C tier because this would be an okay time to wake up at. I'm not saying it's the best, but if you're healthy and stuff, then a nice 5 a.m. jog could get the blood going to start your morning. If you haven't slept and it's still 5 a.m., then this is like the ultimate last chance to not wake up at 1 p.m. the next day. As for 6 a.m., I am placing this above and slotting it into B tier. A lot of people wake up at 6 a.m., especially for those office days to make the commute. And a lot of people in school do the same as well, and I have to say that it is not the worst. I actually don't mind it at all, but I still would prefer to wake up earlier, like at 7 a.m., which I then have going into A tier. 7 a.m. is sneakily a really good time. Like, I feel like that's a very normal time to wake up if you properly sleep. I would know because I wake up at that nice time. Well, with all the naps you take, I am not in one bit surprised you have no problems with waking up at 7 a.m. I don't know if naps necessarily help with that, because it's not like sleeping stacks on to how rested you are after you enter your sleeping cycle, but whatever. Following that, we got the golden hours of waking up, and that is 8 a.m. all the way through 11 a.m., which I have all going straight into S tier, because if you think about it, I would not be upset waking up at any of these times, and they are the perfect hour for breakfast. And if you want a slightly early lunch, then you can do that too. Like, the day just feels fully started at this time, and usually the sun is fully out. 
and there are people doing their normal everyday things in life, and it doesn't feel as solitary. I pray to God that people are out doing their normal everyday tasks at those times. Like Jesus, imagine if everyone was sleeping during that time. Well, those are slots for my famous Joe Dog nap time hour. A nap at 11 a.m. when you really need it, man, that hits the spot. Joe, I don't think anyone is taking a lot of naps at those times. Unless you had something to do and you woke up early as hell and then took a nap, but I personally am not a fan of that. Anyways, after that 12 p.m., and that is a straight A tier for me. This is usually lunchtime, and I look forward to having that in my schedule, but then once you hit 1 p.m. or 2 p.m., you start to realize time slows down and you just can't wait for the end of school or work. So you hyper-focus on that until you eventually can go. All of that leads me to place these two into B tier. Time only slows down if you're not having fun. Now tell me, Barry, are you not having fun during those two hours? No, not really, but I don't like talking about it. But uh, up next, we got 3 and 4 p.m. going straight into A tier. These are the hours you salivate for as you're almost done or are already done with what you need to do in your day. And instead, you focus on what you're going to do after, which leads directly into our free time, the golden hours, if you may. So what you're saying is that these two hours are basically the pregame for the ones after. That's exactly what I am saying, because in my humble and honest opinion, I have 5 through 7 p.m. all going into S tier because those are peak times when you're out and about doing stuff or just chilling at home. You arguably get the most bang for your buck during this time because it's all free time. And there's no worry about going to sleep yet. So you're just fully immersed in whatever you're doing and most times, especially in the summer, the sun does not go down. So you're enjoying the time before it gets dark and you eventually get reminded that you have to go to sleep. This all just seems like you have some sort of bias against sleeping. Like every single time you talk about a negative, you seem to always mention the fact that you need to sleep. Now, what is wrong with sleeping? Because I personally really love sleeping. Of course you do, Joe. But no, the problem does not lie with sleeping. Trust me, but it's just that when you got to think about the next day and what's to come, you can't help but let it bother you. Like you ever have a fun time out with your buds and you're drinking or just relaxing in general and then you look at your phone and realize, oh shit, I gotta go to bed soon. That whole experience is just a bad one and you know that too, Joe. Don't try to act all high and mighty and try to make me seem like I'm the only one who feels this way. Donald, you have to agree with me, right? Well, uh, I can see both ways, but not for the same pussy reason as Joe here. I do admit that opening up your phone late and realizing that you have to wake up or be home in X amount of hours may suck. But a realm motherfucker like me just gets an energy drink and deals with it the next day, as I mentioned earlier. I can go out clubbing one night and be feeding the dogs at 7 a.m. the next morning. Anything is possible with a lot of caffeine. The only drawback is that'll all feel like Lizzo's toilet after she takes some laxatives. Okay, I guess it is possible, but most times out of 10, you feel like absolute dog water when doing that. But fine, I guess that is a valid point. I still have those staying in S tier, but I will at least acknowledge that 8 p.m. through 10 p.m. are still solid A tiers. Like my reasoning is still valid as hell. And if you think about it, these are the final bits of free time before you realize you gotta come back home from wherever you're at or start getting ready for bed if you have something to do early as hell. I don't think those are bad ratings at all, but maybe I'd consider lowering 10 p.m. a tad, but I feel like that's a very normal time to go to sleep. 10 p.m. is a golden hour to slumber, because if you do it too early, people will call you a grandpa, and if you do it too late, you'll have people saying you're gonna die soon if you keep up your erratic and bad sleeping schedule. Joe, I don't think people say that to everyone. I think whoever said that meant it specifically for you. Yeah, Joe, it's probably because you're to 100 than you are to 50. So uh, people are quite concerned with your health, not to mention you're actually the president of this damn country. Oh, well, would you look at that? Anyways, what do you guys think was happening in those tunnels in New York? That shit looks pretty rad. They're blaming the Jews, but me personally, I think it was mole people. Please don't change the topic to something trendy, but I would rather not delve into that conspiracy. Anyways, wrapping up this list, we got 11 p.m., and I have this going into C tier. This is the final hour of judgment, and I just feel like a lot doesn't happen at 11 p.m. And you feel lousy as hell when you see the day switch from being Sunday 11.59 p.m. to Monday 12 a.m. Like you think to yourself, damn, it's the next day already, and that is only cool when it's New Year's Eve, but aside from that, you're just like, 
Ah, shit, here we go again. Okay, nice list, but seriously, what is going on in those tunnels? I kind of want to go down that rabbi hole as well. Uh, get it, guys? Because instead of rabbit hole, I said rabbi hole, and there were Jewish people in the tunnel. Just for that, I'm ending the video.